Okay, okay. So, while I am still collating data and thought and feelings and whatnot on uh, the outer planet, which I'm definitely going to do, don't worry, don't worry, um, I am going to start a new series of the aspects and people's charts. And I want to get, well, really, I want to do all of them, but I want to focus on generational ones as much first, um, as much as possible first, because that's the most coherent. For example, I've been born of the generation of Uranus and Neptune conjunct in, in Capricorn, so actually that's the first video I'll do on this one probably. But in any case, please uh, feel free to to request aspects. I am, It's going to be a, a long road, a big task, but I'm definitely going to do all of them, as long as I'm alive to do them. Um, and I'm just going to keep going, so please uh, go ahead and post what aspects you would like me to talk about here and then be patient it will take me a while but any job worth doing is worth doing right so yeah I guess we should talk a little bit about aspects and then that should be good for this one um, aspects are fascinating aspects are a whole other layer to the chart when I first approached my chart, being that it's so complex, a natal chart is so damn complex. Do I have one on hand? I do. Um, so, here's here's a chart. Uh, we don't have to go into specifics. Right? Ignore the runes. That's not relevant. Um, aspects are fascinating. You know, when you first look at a chart, you have the natal placements. You have Pluto and Scorpio, Sun and whatever, yada, yada, yada. And then uh, you have another layer to it, the houses, which, by the way, is another series I'm going to definitely do. Uh, that's going to be a while as well, but definitely on my list. And um, then you have another layer, which is in the aspects, which is basically understanding how the different positions interact. Trines, energies that work really nicely together, um, conjunctions, energies that are basically fused, if you will. Um, oppositions take us in two different directions, uh, squares 90 degrees apart and so they push us forward. They, it's basically from the vantage point of the earth, um, aspects really, are, actually that's exactly what aspects are, it's the study of the different planetary energies in relation to the earth and um, trying to understand what, what it all means, what these different angles mean. So example a square would be from the direction of the earth, round ball, would be an energy coming this way and then an energy coming this way or this way and that's going to impact us in a certain way um, yeah like I was saying trines are very are very beneficial are very uh, the energies are just very smooth they function really nicely and that is I'm not sure exactly the degree but essentially it is two energies of the same element so for example I have uh, go away fly I have a uh, moon in Cancer and Pluto in Scorpio, both water signs, trying, boom. I want to say it's like 120 degrees, 130, something like that. And uh, a note on conjunctions, the reason why they're so strong, so focused, and so difficult to read, um, as per the, the own, per, the, uh, so subjective, rather, is uh, because from the vantage point of Earth, basically these two planets are on the exact same angle, exact same line. And so, for example, with me, I have Mars and Jupiter directly conjunct, and I've really had to sort through subjective bias, trying to understand what it means to have Mars and Leo on its own, Jupiter and Leo on its own, and even more so, conjunct. So conjunctions are, conjunctions usually get a, um, kind of like a, a gold ticket, you know, where it seems like they're, oh, they're so great and they're so wonderful, but they also have their challenges, just like oppositions are said to be so challenging and whatnot, but they also have their wonderful parts. In fact, I find that conjunctions and oppositions are, are more similar than not, and uh, which is very interesting considering, again, conjunct is two planets, same line, opposite is, uh, here's Earth, planetary energy over here, and then literally the exact opposite over here. And so, as I say, with, with every single energy, with every single placement, and with every single aspect, there's always a positive, there's always a negative. There's always the gift, there's always the challenge that you have to work through. And, um, 
there's certainly, like I was saying, challenges with conjunctions, as well as gifts, yes. And there's also certainly gifts with opposition. Uh, sure. Not sure, actually. Um, squares, difficult, pushes forward, already said that. Oh, sextals, that's, I think, so. Oh, there's two more. Sextals are when you have two planetary energies of different elements, but they they go together really nicely. So what does that mean? Basically, there are four elements. Um, the ancient Greeks, I believe, created this system. Maybe it started with Babylon, I'm not really sure. But essentially, for a long, long time, um, I believe Aristotle talked about this as well. I'm not, I'm not positive, though. A long, long time, we've understood life, energies, in four different combinations. Five, really, but, but four um, primarily. And that is earth, fire, air, and water. And um, I actually do a video about this going into it, so if you want to talk, or if you want to see that, go ahead and check that out. But uh, these four different understandings of energy are basically what I find and what astrology um, asserts is the, the building blocks of, of ourselves. Earth energy is very logical, it's left brain, it's very practical, very pragmatic, stable, humble, yada yada yada. Uh, I'm not going to go into every single one, but, because uh, I've already done that, but, so essentially, a sextile, oh, and the fifth element that the ancient Greeks would talk about is ether, space, or also soul, so that's interesting, it's kind of the um, animating element to all the rest of them. But sextiles are when uh, you have an air and a fire sign, which said to go together very well in the elements, and um, when you have an air fire or a earth and water. So for example, do I... I'm sure I have a sextile somewhere. Right. I'm uh, actually born of a generation with a sextile of Pluto and Scorpio and Neptune and Capricorn. And so we got a water sign and an earth sign. Sextiles are not quite as um, readily available. The benefit is not quite as readily available as trines are. For example, because trines being of the same element, it's just naturally flows really nicely. It's just a, uh, very easy to use those two energies to your benefit. Sextals have that benefit there, but you got to put in some work. you got to match those two different energies. For example, in the case of my generation, um, we have to match that Pluto intensity, that Scorpionic intensity, that emotions, deep, deep feelings and senses. We have to consciously use that with Neptune energies, of, of Earth energies, very practical Capricorn, very studious, working hard, and whatnot. Um, so a good example would be taking these two senses that seem compatible, but still, you have to put in some work to get the reward. For example, devoting that intense, intense Scorpio study, or um, focus energy to, say, Neptunian, Capricornian studying energy. And so, uh, you can study incredibly deeply and incredibly uh, with a lot of discipline. So that's a sex for you. And the last one is uh, the quincunx. The, I believe it's also called the inconjunct, but basically what it is, is when you have one energy and then you go to its opposite sign and then go one sign up or one sign down. So, for example, <clears throat> I have a quincunx between my, actually, I believe a direct quincunx. But yeah, I do. Between uh, my Mercury in Gemini and my Pluto in Scorpio. So, quincunx, right? Opposite sign of Gemini, Sag, moving in one direction is Capricorn. And actually, I have a quincunx to all that Cap energy, or Sigma too. Other, other direction, Scorpio. And uh, as my friend my wonderful, wonderful friend Kate and I have talked about, and she's actually the one who told me this, a quincunx is, it's a little difficult to, to put together. It's kind of like squares or oppositions. They're, well, even more so, they're more like squares. They, um, they're two very different energies, but like all the energies, they, they match up in some way. And indeed, that's what the magic is of quincunx. And that's what Kate told me, is it, it basically, is magic when you get the two to work together. So for example, um, with my Mercury and Pluto quincunx, we have very different energies at play. Uh, Mercury in Gemini is very light and, and intellectual and likes to talk and uses hands and 
and think and all this stuff. And again, Pluto and Scorpio is very deep, very into emotions, very into taboo, exploring all sorts of parts of life and the psyche and emotions that other generations are scared to face. And so, in my combination with that quincunx, the, the magic is when you have such different energies, you have very funny combinations, and in fact, very effective, potentially, combinations. Uh... Honestly, me doing videos talking about the psyche, talking about psychology, essentially, and that's what astrology is, um, is very much, I find, a combination of that, of that quincunx, of the thinking mind combined with the very deep, intuitive, instinctive energies of Scorpio. And also another uh, example of, of the, <laughs> my quincunx would be, I love to, to say really dirty jokes <laughs> at the at very unexpected moments, very much the lightning fast mercurial Gemini boom right, good um, <laughs> which is which is really fun um, and which I don't think you would really get actually I would logically think that uh, you wouldn't get unless that quincunx was there maybe there's other energies that would lead to that thing yeah. okay, so let's see we've covered conjunctions, oppositions. Ah, not so much, actually. Oppositions. One example for me in my life is I have Saturn opposite Ascendant, Venus, Mars, and Jupiter. That is, that is a hell of an opposition. That is, like, all sorts of... Yeah. Um, oppositions really are challenging. They take you in two different directions. For example, in my case, all those planets are in Leo, and then my Saturn is in Aquarius. And um, oppositions demand a lot of us. I would say that when we're younger... Conjunctions are most readily available as per their gifts, and oppositions are most readily available as per their challenges. And as we get older, yes, you can obviously keep building on, on the gifts uh, and uh, rewards of your conjunctions as you get older. But I do find that the challenges of, well, maybe the challenges for conjunctions are there the entire time. I'm not sure, actually. I have to think about that more. But as per oppositions, certainly I find that the the rewards for oppositions definitely come about later on in life. And as you learn to integrate very different parts of yourself. For example, with all my Leo and my, my Aquarius, and especially considering the planets involved, you know, Mars, Jupiter, Venus, and Saturn, I'm taken in two very different directions. Very similar, too. That's what's so interesting about oppositions is... For example, in my case, with this opposition, my Aquarius takes me in a very scientific, studious, serious mindset, making sure that what I do is of worth, is of value, is, um, is uh, or at least certainly doing my best to achieve those goals, to, to contribute to society in some way. And so that energy is literally the exact opposite, literally and figuratively, of the, the more self-centered Leo energy of creativity, um, leadership, uh, expressing myself, focus, just very much more to focus on the self. And again, as I've said in many videos, ego is not a bad thing, it's not an evil thing. We just have to learn to understand it and work with it. Certainly my Leo energy has been incredibly difficult with its ego, but it has its benefits too. Um, so with the opposition in mind, at this point in my life, after years of living and still so much, hopefully, more to go, um, it's been difficult to, to marry these two forces in my life, this, this need to contribute to the world and contribute to society and humanity, and the need to express myself and creativity and all that. And it's led to a lot of frustration, it's lot, led to a lot of patience, especially whenever Saturn's involved in a conjunction, opposition, uh, whatever, any aspect, patience is needed. And um, certainly with the opposition in general, I would say patience is needed. And uh, after years of, of consciously working with these two energies, these two disparate parts of myself and my energies, I've, I've made progress. And uh, that's the whole point with opposition, is making progress and finding the beautiful rewards that exist right past the challenges. And indeed, I find that oppositions have just as much to offer as conjunctions. Really, you know, all these different aspects have just as much to offer. Um, mm, well, when I think about it, 
Maybe Sextal isn't quite obviously as strong as Trine, isn't quite obviously as strong